Hey, what's up guys? It's JM. Uh, this week I have been getting a ton of DMs on Keybase on two things. One about plotting. Hey, I built your exact system. I'm getting, you know, half the amount of output you're getting. What the hell's going on? And uh, I did make a video going over some of the BIOS fixes that, uh, you know, that I set on some of my systems, going to, through some of the tweaks. Um, I'll continue to do that. Today, the video is about farming. I get a ton of um, questions about they yeah, have been farming for six days. Uh, I have 300 terabytes. What the hell? I haven't won a single block. Uh, you know, is my thing busted? Is, am I unlucky? Uh, so I'm going to walk you through the tools that I actually have to, to kind of go through this and debug some of this stuff. Um, you know, so the first part I'm going to walk you through is just the, the math, because this is very important to understand if you're getting unlucky and the probability of winning a block. Um, so in Chia, basically your probability of winning is basically your total farming capacity over the total net space, that's the probability you have to win every block, and then you have 4,608 blocks per day, on average, uh, that is basically chances to win. And then your probability is very easy. It's just you take your expected value is your probability times 4,608 chances to win, and then multiply that by two, because you have two Chia as a reward for every block reward. Um, okay, so that's your expected value, but your probability distribution is not going to be exactly that, because uh, that depends on one the sample size, which is the number of blocks, and then two, which is um, you know how much net space, you know how much farming capacity you have over the net space. Uh, and so the way that this actually falls out is called the Poisson distribution. And uh, there's a good video on Khan Academy and some other websites on YouTube that like kind of explain this. But basically, it's a way of if if you like measure something and you know you know the probability of one thing happening and you know you know kind of what time period that happens in you can estimate how many events will happen in a different time period. Uh, and this is what Poisson distribution is used for. And um, it's a very good tool and we're gonna go through. Uh, we actually made this spreadsheet, uh, Gene and I late one night, you know, very early in the beta, maybe six months ago, we actually had to update it for the new consensus because we made it so, so long ago. Um, so, you know, we're gonna go here with a couple examples. Um, so the way this works is you basically have your farming space here and you have your total net space in TIB here. And you know today we're at like you know 1.4 exabytes here in uh, you know the first of May. Uh, that's exciting and big. You know you know much bigger than I think everybody thought. So uh, and then your probability per block is basically just your total park space over the net space. So we'll just say here, you know, for sake of you know, let's say I have you know 300 terabytes uh, or TIP. Okay, so the average time per block. This is if you go look at the new consensus document, you'll kind of get the math behind this. Uh, but there's blocks and there's sub slots and then there's um, infusion points there's all this stuff in the new consensus but basically it averages out to be you know in every i think it's like 32 uh blocks in each sub slot and each sub slot 10 minutes or, I, I think that's the termination but terminology sorry uh so 18 and a half point seven five seconds is how much the average time per block um okay and then in Poisson, you'll see we're going to do two ways of calculating this so one we're going to calculate Poisson distribution and one with just a binomial bi binomial distribution. Uh, the binomial distribution basically you say, okay, uh, you have this number of trials, and my probability is this. What's my percent chance of winning? Zero, one, two, whatever. Uh, this is used in probability very often as well. So you'll see these are actually exactly the same because we're basically the way that um, the the uh, difficulty works is that the difficulty resets every day. In such that it tries to make the average block time you know target at 18.75 seconds so right now the blocks are running faster because the difficulty is exploding and actually net space is outpacing that growth for the 24-hour period so uh, on average actually it's a little bit different right now because the block time is a little bit lower but don't worry about that for now uh, I, the ideal way to do this average time per, per block would actually be to use uh, the real difficulty formula okay so how do we calculate this thing called lambda you know do does it really matter what lambda means? Probably not, but I'll show you what it means. Basically, you're saying, okay, what's my time farming? So I just take one day and multiply that into seconds. And then you know, you're basically uh, dividing that by your average time per block. And that's your kind of window. Uh, that's You're trying to measure the number of events in this specific window. Um, and this is the uh, time of the events. And then this is the window that you're doing it in. And then you have your probability, which I mentioned was your farming space over the next space. Uh, and so this is very, very... Like this is this one's hard to understand for a lot of people, but in this case today, if I have uh, 300 terabytes on the, the net space, which is today one, about 1.4 exabytes 
uh, there's a 39% chance that I win zero blocks in one day. And so if I had go a day without winning one, uh, that is not very uncommon. That, that's, that's a pretty common thing, 40% chance. Um, and so say I you know, calculate this time farming and I put in five days. Okay, now there's only a 1% chance that you have one zero block. And you can see, you, you get back to the mean, which is about four. Um, and then, you know, there's a pretty good chance, 16% that you win three blocks, a 17% chance that you win five blocks. And you can see very easily that if you do this for many, many days, you'll get a little, very close to the, you know, to the mean, you know, within a couple blocks. But in the short term, right, if you're just farming for a few days, there's a, you could get lucky and win, you know, if you got very, very lucky and you're the luckiest person in the world, you can win 11 blocks in five days. If you're the unluckiest person in the world, you can, you know, win zero blocks. And so, okay, how do I use this to diagnose problems? Uh, if, if this is you, if you have 300 terabytes and you've been farming for five days and have one block, um, uh, there's a 99% chance that things are broken and there's a 1% chance that you're unlucky. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I let people do the math, right? That, to me, that sounds like something's broken uh, and there's a high probability, 99% chance that something is not working functionally. Uh, and there's 1% chance that you're just unlucky. So in, in that case, um, you know, you start looking at debugging things. So uh, one of the things, you know, uh, I've been helping people with, you know, by the way, I am no, by no means a distributed systems expert, a blockchain expert uh, yet, and, uh, or a network expert, but, you know, the, you know, the way that these uh, open systems work, uh, they have UPnP, uh, they're basically universal plug and play, it opens ports when you need them, and then you have port forwarding, which allows you to have incoming and outgoing traffic on the Chia port 8444. So, so there's two problems. One, if you have UPnP, UPnP enabled and you have port forwarding enabled, uh, those clash and conflict and cause lots of problems. And um, you know, generally people have issues with that. They might win some blocks, they might be intermittent, they might win no blocks. Boy, that's, that's very, very hard to diagnose. I have found that there's some specific models of routers. Uh, you know, I'm gonna throw Google under the bus right here because I had some Google nests in my old house and I threw them out because they're pieces of crap. Uh, I have uh, Ubiquity stuff, some, some a UDM Pro that I use now, and it, everything's great. It's much more flexibility uh, than, you know, consumer type router. Um, but yeah, there's going to be a lot of variable, variability, you know, based on the type of router hardware people have. Uh, okay, the other thing, um, are you running more than one full node at your house? Okay, well, again, um, this is not a Chia problem. This is an IPv4 problem, because on IPv4, if you have one one external IP address, you have to forward the port from 8444 to an internal IP address of your farmer. Okay, this is fixed in IPv6. Ever you can just have different IPv6 addresses for all your farmers, and you can forward the port to them, and everything is happy. Okay, well most people don't have IPv6 running in their house yet. So if you're running more than one copy of a full node in your house, unless you really know what you're doing with the network, don't do that. Uh, just run one and you run these things called harvesters. We'll do another video at some point explaining harvesters in depth because uh, that is actually the tool in Chia to basically figure out if you're going to, um, you know, if you're going to farm on many machines, you want harvesters doing all the work on the machines and then sending the farmers sending the challenges to the harvesters and the harvesters only sending the results back. They don't need to do a bunch of network traffic. Um, the other thing is timeouts. So if you're looking at your harvester log and you're seeing, you know, times of like, you know, 10 seconds, 30 seconds to load the plot, uh, that's really bad. That means what you're having timeout issues in IO latencies uh, on the reads uh, from the plot file. So this could be caused whether if you are mounting plots over the network, over NAF, this could be bad because, um, you know, some of these NAF file systems do not do well with these 100 gigabyte files and hundreds of them. Um, you know, we've seen lots of different things with network connectivity and different, um, you know, like we had crazy things where you saw we saw different latencies depending on the file directory structure, you know, on these NASs. So if you have a NAS, you really have to watch out for these. Um, the Chia team is working on some enhancements in the next version to make it a little bit easier to warn you. Basically, if, if there's some something that timed out for more than five seconds on a load, so if you're if the challenge is taking longer than five seconds, they'll warn you and just say, hey, this is bad, you know, because you have a very short amount of time to respond to a challenge. Um, yeah, and so, you know, the uh, overloaded CPU is one another one, um, you know, if you have a kind of low, you know, grade pie or something, and you're just in the, in the middle of syncing and the things at 100% CPU, that can also cause latency spikes in the IO and the, re and the reading of the plots. Uh, so that sucks too. You don't want to be in a spot where you're, you know, 
which is tricky because you you can use a very lightweight system for farming, but you know you need to know if it's sinking and it's overloaded and your times are going up. You need to you know look at that versus a normal operating farmer where things are nice and happy. Um, yeah, and then the other one, you know, just we've been dealing with massive growth in the network, hundreds of thousands of nodes on the network, and you know this is not dissimilar than BitTorrent, right? Where in BitTorrent, there was a lot of people that wanted to leech and download copies of the files, but not a lot of people wanted to actually see the files and upload to other people. Uh, this is very the same as in Chia. A lot of people are, want to connect to other people's full nodes and download all the information, but they don't necessarily want a bunch of peers connecting to them. And you need all the port, uh, ports open and all that stuff. So um, there's just a lot of ports that are all taken up and, and uh, the Chia team is working on scaling that. So for now, if your network is out of sync, you can add, uh, node.chia.net, uh, port case 444, and that will help you kind of get back in sync again. But um, yeah, you really need to watch out for all this stuff. And I know it's, uh, this is not easy stuff. Um, you know, we spent many months in the beta looking at all these things and it's all changing so fast because the nest based growth is just going insane. So uh, if this is you, if you're a you know, 300 terabyte guy and you know you haven't won for a couple of days, uh, you know, make sure everything's working properly, especially these people that are trying to scale you know, to two and 300 terabytes, it's going to take a couple of desktops. You have to start figuring out plan B, plan C, what the hell we're going to do with Chia. Uh, ideally, like I said, you're going to run Harvester and uh, we'll show how to set that up here later. But uh, okay, so that was it. Uh, again, remember this, um, your probability of winning a block is the, every, the area under the curve. If you're, you're going to be under the curve and you could be anywhere in there. Um, again, most likely you'll be towards the mean because that's the highest probability, but you can be anywhere under this curve. And uh, you know, if there's a, you know, something like this, where it's like, you have 300 terabytes and you haven't won a block in two days, well, there's a 15% chance that, that that's just luck. And so that's, that's not out of the question, but you should definitely use this as a tool to basically diagnose um, when things work. So, uh, okay, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, thanks, guys.